Piracy. While it's not the problem it used to be in the late 80s when anyone with a high speed dubbing hi fi could start up a bootlegging side hustle, and although some studios are still hell bent on inflicting paying customers with awful DRM like Denuvo, some developers go completely the other way and actually recommend customers pirate their games. So, this episode, we take a look at these pilfered programs, these abducted applications, and these swiped software. As I say. But, hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five times developers wanted you to pirate their games. This video is sponsored by Clash Royale, the epic free-to-play phenomenon. Clash Royale is a totally immersive, real-time multiplayer game, starring the Royals, your favourite Clash characters, and much, much more. Collect and upgrade dozens of cards featuring all the Clash of Clan troops, spells and defences you know and love, as well as the Royals, Princes, Knights, Baby Dragons, and a whole plethora of exciting characters. Knock the enemy King and Princesses from their towers to defeat your opponents to win trophies, crowns, and achieve glory in the arena. So, download the amazing Clash Royale totally free right now with the link below. Available on iOS and Android. It would be pretty easy to assume that, in the eyes of a game developer, the worst people in the world are pirates. A game studio puts all that time, effort and passion into a project only for a naughty scamp armed only with a BitTorrent client to get their kicks for free. But for Mike Rose from Descenders publisher No More Robots, there is something worse than somebody who doesn't want to pay. And that's the company known as G2A. The well-known game key selling website has long been a bane for game publishers. But for Mike Rose, enough was enough. First of all, he was frustrated that G2A's cheap key adverts were displayed at the top of the page in Google, beating out all the reputable game outlets. Then the next day, he just straight up told everyone he would prefer people just to pirate descenders rather than buy a key from G2A. But why, you might ask? If you are buying a key from G2A, then surely some of that money must be making its way back to the publisher. Right? Wrong. Here's how the scam works. Some cheeky monkey gets a stolen credit card and quickly buys up some keys from a games publisher. Then, as fast as they can, they sell these keys to G2A and then disappear off with the money. G2A sell the keys bought with stolen money onto a customer and they now have the game. But then, shock horror, the owner of the credit card in the first place realises their money is missing and gets the card provider to get their money back. The card provider goes back to the publisher and gets the cash. So all that ends up happening is the publisher has given a game away for free, but the thief and G2A have both made money out of nothing. So you now can see why Mike would rather you just visit a pirate website rather than G2A, or as Mike probably calls it, gaming's two arseholes. It's all a bit of a shame really, because Descenders is a fun little BMX game, and the people involved deserve to make some money from it. But it just goes to show that free riding isn't free. Also Mike, you should have named your publisher Mike Rose Soft. Bit of a wasted opportunity there mate. Piracy of PC games is as inevitable as a Pizza Molyneux screw up. It's going to happen, and there's nothing anyone could do to prevent it. So, with that being the case, when the developer of Please Fix the Road, Ariel Jakowski, announced the game's release, not only did they reveal Steam and good old games releases, but also a torrent version of the game was announced alongside the legal outlets. 
why did this developer purposely stick their game on a torrent file sharing website themselves, while at the same time they were trying to sell the game through the usual channels? Well, the thinking is that the game is going to get cracked and pirated anyway, so why not be the one to do it yourself and try to get the game a bit of PR at the same time? Well, this unusual tactic worked and got people talking, but the torrent version went a bit further than just a simple PR move. Please Fix the Road is a quality little puzzle game which sees the players use a predetermined set of road pieces to create a pathway for traffic in each diorama style level. Then, once the level is over, you get some of the greatest level transition animations ever seen in a puzzle game to guide you into the next brain scratcher. However, right from the moment the torrent has finished downloading, this pirated version has a few differences from the paid release. First of all, the game comes with a readme file that asks you to consider buying the game. Then, once you begin the game, this is the introduction you get. A special pirate song for the intro, and a ARR because you're a pirate. The rest of the game is essentially the same as the paid version, apart from this little pirate icon in the corner that, when clicked on, asks if you consider buying the game from Steam, GOG or itch.io. So not only has this developer shown there can be some merit in releasing your games directly to the pirates, they also provided that Unity Engine can actually be used to make decent games. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Most of the games on this list are PC titles because no console maker is going to be crazy enough to suggest piracy. Well, no one except serial lunatics Sega. Anyone well versed in Sega's ill-fated Dreamcast console will probably be aware of the Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. There was never a Volume 2, but after you've seen the shocking quality on display here, that's probably not a bad thing. Sega Smash Pack Volume 1 is a collection of Mega Drive games quickly shoved onto a Dreamcast disc using probably the worst quality emulation ever released as an official product. There are sprites priority issues like you can see here on the Sonic 1 title screen, but by far the biggest offender here is how badly the music across all the games has been butchered. I mean, Golden Axe sounds like a Master System game. Streets of Rage 2 would make Yuzo Koshiro cry. <laughs> and Sonic 1 sounds like the distorted Sonic music meme. How did this even happen? A machine that is capable of running perfect versions of the top arcade games of its day, and even has an arcade perfect version of Virtua Cop 2 on the same disc, somehow is running Mega Drive games in this state. Anyhow, as Sega have managed to screw up the Dreamcast's copy protection, pirated games were rampant. Games would be cracked and then repacked onto consumer grade CDRs. And one of the biggest cracking groups in the Dreamcast scene was Echelon. Sega Smash Pack was yet another game in the long line that Echelon cracked and uploaded to piracy websites in 2001. But in the release notes, they say that they would tweak it so you could put your own Mega Drive ROMs into the pirate version. And then they go on to thank Uncle Sonic. It wasn't until retro enthusiasts could read Dreamcast games on regular home equipment around 2008 that the whole story of what went on here actually came out. You see, when Echelon first cracked the Sega Smash Pack, they found an unusual text file in the code. It was this message you could see on screen now. 
It was a guide on how to add ROMs and change the emulator settings, and it was addressed to whoever was going to crack and illegally distribute the collection. It was signed by Gary Lake, who was a Sega programmer behind the Smash Pack, and he instructed the pirates to pay their respects to Uncle Sonic, which is exactly what they did in both the release notes and the cracked game intro. So it just proves that there really is honour among thieves, while they are modding around the speed of sound. <laughs> Gaming is not exactly the cheapest of hobbies. Between Blizzard's nickel and dime microtransaction tactics and Nvidia trying their hardest to extract every remaining penny from your wallet, it's never been easier to sink more money than you can maybe afford into this world of electronic delight. With that said, no one is expecting studios to just hand over their games that they put a ton of hard work into for free. However, in the case of survival horror video game Darkwood by Polish studio Acid Wizard, these two thoughts cross paths thanks to hatred Acid Wizard rightly harbours to our friends over at G2A. The story begins when the studio noticed a young player had asked for a refund for Darkwood. Not because they didn't like it, but because the young gamer's parents were a bit cash strapped at the time, and he had second thoughts about spending the little money he had on a video game. Acid Wizard decided that they would simply put the game on the Pirate Bay Torrent website themselves, so people who couldn't spare the money could still play their game. It probably also helped that it had been out for three years at this point. Nevertheless, they uploaded their game to the Pirate's website and just made two requests from anyone that downloaded it. Please buy the game when you can afford it, and if you do buy it, don't purchase it from a key reseller like G2A, who they refer to as Cancer leeching off the industry. Oof. <laughs> Don't pull no punches, eh, hey, lads? Yeah! Our final segment today is about the Duke Nukem inspired FPS Iron Fury from developer Voidpoint. And Fury is probably the most apt word to describe this rage induced story. In 2018, developer Voidpoint released the first version of their love letter to Duke Nukem, Iron Fury. It plays, looks, and feels just like a game that fell straight out of that era of late 90s PC gaming. This extends to the so-called jokes during gameplay too, which are about the level of the one you see on screen now. However, it was the combination of these in-game jokes and the comments you see on screen from the developers on Discord, which got a group of people rather upset. To the point they were perturbed enough to make a lot of noise to get void points and the media's attention. The studio patched the game and made a $10,000 donation to an LGBT charity, hoping that would be the end of it. But no, because this is the internet and the backlash to the backlash began. A different group of people were now upset and claimed that Voidpoint were now censoring their artistic vision. So the studio had once again fired up the Twitter machine and sent out tweets to attempt to calm down yet another angry group. After people on both sides of the stupid fence declared that they wouldn't spend any money on the game, the developer, who had clearly had enough by this point, just said, it's 95 megabytes, just pirate it. And with one last thing for the media to write about, this finally managed to stub out the controversy. So the lesson to be learnt here is, if one day you find yourself in a PR nightmare, just tell everyone the thing they're upset about is now free on the Pirate Bay. Hello you, thanks ever so much for watching. Please subscribe to be first to see future videos of mine. And if you really want to help me, please consider supporting me on Patreon. But until next time, I'm missing you already.